a massive object emerging from hyperspace. With Season 7 of Star Wars The Clone Wars in full swing and a final 12 episodes finally being released to the public, I think it's time that we take a look at what could have been with Star Wars The Clone Wars. The remainder of Star Wars The Clone Wars could have been over three times as long as the 12 episodes that we were going to get, with many of the unfinished and unreleased episodes being adapted to comics and to books, and several just being dropped from the timeline altogether. Dave Filoni had intentions to carry the show on one to two more seasons beyond that of of Season 7, and actually had intentions to carry the show into and after the events of Episode 3, Similar to how it is in Season 7, but he was actually going to go further into the area, uh, you know, the Jedi Purge. Now, unfortunately, that didn't happen. However, this kind of idea to write some stories, write uh, my own arc of Star Wars The Clone Wars kind of exists. Think of it like in an alternate timeline where those additional episodes, those three times 12 episodes, at least at bare minimum, would have actually been released, and the show would have continued for several more seasons. It's just something I'm toying around with, like most of the ideas on this channel. It just kind of comes, I think about it for a while, and then decide to record. Um, Disney, if you hear this and you feel like you want to make a story, feel free to use it. Um, I'd be more than happy to donate this to the you know greater cause of furthering the Star Wars fandom and giving some good stories, or at least what, in my opinion, I consider to be good stories. So starting off, the placing of this episode is actually going to take place in the middle of The Dark Disciple. For those of you who don't know, The Dark Disciple was a planned eight episodes of Star Wars The Clone Wars that was later adapted into books, where Quinlan Voss turns to the dark side. This arc would take place immediately in the middle, right after he turns to the dark side. It would act similar to like an intermission, you know, but it still keeps the action up. It's still going to be intense episodes. However, it's going to give a little bit of breathing room for Ventress and Quinlan Voss, though Quinlan Voss will be a main character in this arc, but not to the extent that he was in The Dark Disciple. He will be taking on a much more antagonistic role. And I think that it's certainly important to relate these episodes, again, these hypothetical fan-made episodes, um, to something that has already existed in Star Wars The Clone Wars. To make something just, like, unrelated to everything, well, then it doesn't really have any need to exist. However, these, I believe, will both keep the intensity up, lead into Episode 3, into the final season, The Siege of Mandalore. It will all make sense in the end, and all of it will tie up together nicely, especially with that the story of Dark Disciple. So starting off, we're going to see Palpatine in the Senate kind of arguing with a lot of the senators, people saying that the war effort has gone on for far too long and that they need to find a peaceful option soon or they need to defeat the Separatists. But either way, the war needs to end very quickly. And if Palpatine is unable to do so, they will move for a vote of no confidence. Palpatine, even with his emergency powers, cannot stop the entire Galactic Republic's will to end the war. And therefore, he needs to find a swifter way to end the Clone War. I would imagine that all this background information would simply take place before the episode starts, kind of, you know, in the opening narration bit, uh, right after the title mo- um, the title comes across the screen. We would just see a bunch of senators arguing and bickering, and that voice would be like, a vote of no confidence. Palpatine would then contact Count Dooku, who is on his home world, and he would say that, they, that the senators are getting restless, that the war needs to pick up, and that their plans must be, must be expedited if they are in fact to succeed in actually taking over the galaxy and destroying the Jedi. If Order 66 is to happen, that there needs to be galaxy-wide war. He will say that a planet needs to be made an example of, and to be made a catalyst for the Republican war effort, and therefore he has selected the planet of Kamino. He'll tell Count Dooku to attack Kamino with all available forces. They are not going to pull punches. This is not going to be a surprise attack where there's some droids underwater. This is going to be an all-out orbital bombardment. And since the Republic won't be suspecting it as they were in Season 3, keep in mind that they had intercepted a transmission between Ventress and Grievous, this will actually be just a straight-up surprise attack with numbers much higher than they were in that of the episode in Season 3. Sidious would then say that he would not accept failure, and that if he fails, he will look into finding a new apprentice. The hologram will go dark as General Grievous and Quinlan Voss, both, again, Quinlan Voss is now a separatist, enter the room. Dooku will inform them to scramble all available ships and form a massive fleet. He will be taking personal command of this attack, and they will begin to attack Kamino in a few days. Cut to Anakin in the middle of a camp in some planet. It's obviously clearly he's in the middle of some kind of campaign, and Captain Rex is going to say that Palpatine has requested to talk to him. 
Palpatine will then say that, that he needs rest and that he should just go to Kamino and take a few days off. Palpatine's clear plan is to put Anakin in the line of fire and to make him more resentful towards the Republic, which wasn't able to see a surprise attack coming, make him more resentful towards the Jedi for not being as attentive as they were in the beginning of the war and being sloppy with each victory that they get. Anakin will arrive on Kamino, talk to Shock T, they'll, you know, just relax a little bit. He is on, you know, land leave. Uh, to some extent. He is a bit on a, somewhat of a vacation mid-conflict, so it's going to be very low stress. He's going to be kind of relaxing. The fleet that is surrounding Kamino has significantly decreased after the attack on Kamino since that fleet was only bulked up in the knowledge that there was going to be an attack on the planet. So we're looking at a fleet that's probably a third the size of what it was in the Season 3 Episode 2 battle. Anakin and Shakti are in the command center simply operating and watching as everything goes around on the planet, just simply watching the monitors and doing what simply is calming, when all of a sudden the alarm is going to go off and a massive fleet is going to jump out of hyperspace directly in front of Kamino. Count Dooku will then immediately jam all comms, and but then contact Anakin and Shakti down on the planet, saying that they should immediately surrender and abandon their posts, because Kamino is soon going to all be underwater. Topoka City and all other installations will be destroyed. Anakin and Shakti protest, saying that they've defended Kamino one time before and they can easily do it again, especially against simply just Count Dooku, regardless of his fleet size, when Dooku will say, that is precisely what I expected, and Grievous's fleet and Quinn and Voss's fleet will both drop out of hyperspace on either side, forming what is kind of like a pincer maneuver on the what is now seemingly a skeleton fleet of the Republic. All of the Separatist ships begin to fire as fighters are immediately scrambled on the Republic side to help combat the much higher volume fleet. Uh, most of the Star Destroyers are going to kind of flip on their backs, similar to what we see in the Season 1 episode where Ahsoka takes control of the two Resolute, not sorry, not Resolute, but Venator class Star Destroyers, in an attempt to shield both the departing Starfighters and the smaller support craft. Anakin and Shakti will be hopelessly outgunned regardless of their best efforts, and he will eventually contact Obi Wan Kenobi using R2 D2, though the signal will of course go dark, stopping them from really calling any reinforcements. And since all the planets have Star Destroyers on them and there's so many campaigns going on, the Republic couldn't even spare a Star Destroyer if they wanted to. But from a holographic message with Obi Wan, Anakin will understand that Quinlan Voss must be a part of this campaign, and that it has to be him turned from the dark side, former Jedi, now dark side adept and separatist commander. And it is with that that the first episode will go to the credits. Episode 2 will start out simple enough. The opening narration will say that Anakin and Shakti have conducted a, you know, a last-ditch effort to protect Kamino, and that a small task force will end up infiltrating Quinlan Voss's cruiser. Anakin will say that if they can take down the Separatist's new champion, they might be able to turn the tide of the battle, and maybe even a few of the guns on those ships against other Separatist cruisers. Some action will obviously ensue as several ships attempt to infiltrate his Providence-class cruiser carrier. Many will be shot down, and as they enter, a massive firefight unfolds. Captain Rex will, of course, be present in this battle. I don't know why he wouldn't. The ARC Trooper Jesse will will also be um, here in this battle. I just want to have as many characters that are big, but also not terribly important characters. So big clone characters and maybe a Jedi, which is Shock T. Shock T will, of course, be on the ground at this point. She is overseeing the battle from the ground, from a distance. And it is from this distance that we will see how massive the Separatist fleet is, dwarfing that of the Republic fleet, which is pitifully attempting to defend the small, watery world. They're going to sneak around the cruiser a bunch until they eventually find and alert Quinlan Voss. Quinlan Voss will be on the bridge, and droids will alert him that there are Jedi and clone infiltrators on the ship, to which Quinlan Voss will leave the bridge to go and pursue them. When Quinlan and Anakin finally catch up, there will be a lightsaber duel, though in the time that it takes for the lightsaber to dually clones will be firing at droids, kind of seemingly protecting the two of them from any stray fire, but the ships on the Republic side will be being decimated as they are obviously massively outgunned. The idea of this, and really this entire arc, is to fight a losing battle, to really give the Republic and the Jedi a losing arc in this show. Something that I've noticed about Star Wars The Clone Wars is that just about every major battle, the Republic wins, because... Honestly, something I've noticed, too, is that a lot of stuff in the Clone Wars is the fate of the galaxy defend, depends on finding this information, on getting this key, on finding these people. There is never a time when the clones actually lose. And if they do, there are seemingly unimportant or insignificant battles that, like, really don't affect the outcome of the entire war. But every major battle, 
happens to be won by the Republic. And this is something that gives the, the Republic and the Jedi kind of an idea of what losing feels like, to really lose. I'd imagine a stray acclimator class cruiser would jump into the Camino system not knowing that there was a battle going on due to the jam communications, only to find that it would be immediately bombarded and bombed, strafed by vulture droids, attacked by munificent class carriers, Providence class, Lucra Holt class, literally every ship they have just absolutely unleashing on this poor small cruiser. And I think that the inclusion of that small scene would really just help to drive home the point that this is in fact a big deal, that there are many, this is a big deal for the Republic and that they are fighting a losing battle. Eventually, Shock T would contact Anakin Midduel saying that he needs to get back to the city because they have broken through the line and now they are being attacked by hyena droid bombers. Anakin and Quinlan get separated by a blast shield door, and they and Anakin will reluctantly leave, going back to his ship with what few troops remain. Obviously, Rex and Jesse will survive along with them. However, they are going to be a massively fewer people leaving than did arrive originally, and they will get back to Topoka City. When Anakin arrives, he will look up from the hangar to see massive explosions in space, as what looms is only now Separatist ships. The Republic fleet has been entirely decimated, and everyone in the sky is either dead, captured, or soon to be dead. Suddenly what he sees is the ships moving around the planet from the atmosphere. He goes to the control center and what he sees is the ships are wrapping around the planet. Not simply attacking the main city, they are actually moving around the planet to multiple areas. At this point, Dooku will make contact with the people in Topoka City, contacting Shakti and Anakin Skywalker, saying that they have lost the battle and that they need to surrender. Anakin being, you know, as he is, his personality and never really wanting to give up, will deny him this pleasure and say that they will never surrender Kamino to Separatist forces, at which point Count Dooku will simply say, then you will be destroyed, as every ship in the Separatist fleet opens fire using orbital bombardment to destroy as many of the installations as possible. Anakin, Shock T, Rex, and Jesse all flee jumping into the water just in time as they see laser fire coming down and raining down onto Poka City. Most of the planet's installations and cities have been destroyed. Much of the Kaminoans, many of the clones, any clone that was healing, growing, training, learning, is now dead. Kamino, as far as its usefulness to the Republic Army, is now a moot point. There is no usefulness that this water world has. There is but a few installations on the far side, and this was just kind of to keep in continuity with the Darth Vader comic because there are a few clones that are recently produced at that time. And this comic does come out after the events of, of Revenge of the Sith, so I couldn't destroy every installation. But the point was is to destroy enough to where what few clones Kamino could produce after this point would be irrelevant and that really the Republic had to fight with what they had and also that there was no way that they could produce as many clones as they were losing in the war, and thus had to speed up the war, be more aggressive with their fighting and tactics. What follows next will be one of those, like, I, I imagine a midnight kind of search as gunships are going around the waters with uh, those mag gigantic like LED flashlights shining on the water trying to find survivors as they find Anakin, uh, Shakti, not Ahsoka, Shakti, Captain Rex, and Jesse, the ARC trooper, in the water, floating on some debris, some flotation devices that they were able to find. Point is, they pick them up and then fly them away in the gunship. Clearly, they are injured, but soon, of course, Anakin will be back on the front lines. Shakti will be in the Jedi Temple, which would explain why Shakti is in the Jedi Temple during Revenge of the Sith and not on Kamino, where she should be. Just kind of help bridge a little bit of continuity here. Point is, then we will then cut to Palpatine in the Senate chamber, as the Senate is now in uproar. As Palpatine attempts to calm them down, saying that they will reinvigorate their war efforts and they will continue to fight hard so that the clones and technicians and scientists that died in the doomed defense of Kamino would not die in vain, that they would find, capture, or kill Dooku, Grievous, and Voss, that they would not end, they would not hold out on their war efforts or their campaigns, that they would push harder, push more aggressive to bring a swift end to the Clone Wars as the crowd cheers. Clones are even seen cheering as they watch from various bars or various ships watching the communications as the war effort is now reinvigorated, as Kamino has been made a martyr, and now they have a reason to fight, they have a reason to trust him, to accept his ultimate control of the militarized state. And we will hear that slight Imperial March music that we occasionally hear in Star Wars The Clone Wars as the camera will zoom in on Palpatine's face as he has a small smile cracked on the edge of his mouth. And the credits will roll. 
So yes, just a small two-part episode. Again, really wanted to make it in between the four, the eight episodes of Dark Disciple, make it you know right after Quinlan Voss turned to the dark side, because in the book, we actually see that they actually, with Quinlan Voss, won several battles, and I wanted to show at least one of those. But this is just two episodes. Again, a little bit of an intermission in between the episodes of the Dark Disciple arc. Again, adding more context, fleshing out Quinlan Voss, making Camino a martyr, which would make have it give long-standing um, consequences to the actions of these episodes, making Anakin's resentment towards the Republic for being unable to detect such a such a battle. And then, of course, whenever the Empire comes around, a much more militarized state, Anakin, or then Vader, will approve of this because such a surprise attack on a planet like Kamino could not and would not ever happen again. But anyway, Clone Wars is back in full swing, and while we might not be getting as many episodes as we were originally pre-cancellation, we are still getting 12 episodes, and I'm super excited. Um, next week, I will, if time permits, I will be getting my Bad Batch review out to you guys. I will be reviewing the Clone Wars based on arc and not based on episode, as I did with The Mandalorian. But I will be getting that out to you, so the first four episodes will be reviewed, the Bad Batch arc. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you again next time.